satyrs that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Well, good Sunday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Dembski Sports Complex in downtown Buffalo, the home of the Canisius College Golden Griffins. It's the site for game three, the decisive final game of the 2022 Monsignor Martin Georgetown Cup Championship. We are split one apiece between our competitors, the number one seeded St. Joe's Marauders, who took game one, Canisius, the two seed, the Crusaders took game number two in decisive fashion yesterday, winning a final score 12 to five to force game three here today, a winner take all game where the Crusaders will be the visitors, the Marauders, the home team. We thank you for joining us here on Western New York Athletics for all of your Monsignor Martin Georgetown Cup Championship action throughout this weekend. I'm Jack Cruiser, joined by Tom Prince, Francis Beck on the ones and twos. Tom, what can you expect from today's game in a team in a battle of teams that obviously know each other extremely well and almost have seen enough of each other in the last two days? Seen enough of each other all season, if you mm. look at it. But listen, what's been the key so far has been pitching. That's been absolutely the key. Swinsicki with game one comes out. He's our player of the game, in fact, in a 4-3 victory. Then Ball comes out and pits, pitches an absolute gem for Canisius to get the win. I also thought Lynch pitched real well in game one. Mm -hmm. That's real good pitching that you've seen. Now, we know it, right? You're still getting to down to your third starter, right? Or your third or fourth in some cases. So now the question will be, is the pitcher ready to step up or do we got a big offensive battle game that we're going to watch in this one? That's the question right now. And for St. Joe's, we're going to see a pitcher that has four innings under his belt with Bucello out there on the mound. Does that mean he can't go out there and throw? Absolutely it's not. Talk to Coach Nasca. This has been my third baseman. He's so good at third base, I didn't want to take him off at third base. But does he have the capability to come into a game like this and do exactly what he's capable of doing? Absolutely. It's why Coach Nasca has all the faith in the world to him. We know on the flip side, right? And right, right now is ready to come in for for Canisius. He was ready to come in in the last game as we saw him out there warming up. We know he's one of the guys right now for Canisius. He's ready for this moment. Now, who's going to be the one to step up and who's going to be the one to talk to Jack Cruiser at the end of this <laughs> game as a player of the game? The Canisius Crusaders got after St. Joe's yesterday in the bottom of the first and second. They scored a combined five runs. They held on to that 5 nothing lead throughout the game even after the Crusaders would add on to that in the fifth with an explosive five-run fifth inning. It was a dominant 12-5 victory for Canisius off 13 hits, and they still, Tom, left 11 runners on base in that contest. Just a clinic at the plate for Canisius yesterday. Mazzara on base five times, Lynch on base five times. St. Joe's has to have an answer for that. Lynch right now, the hottest hitter in the Georgetown Cup Finals. There has to be an answer right now. Is Busillo the answer is the question. Now we find out. First pitch at 12.05 is in there for a strike from Brandon Busillo as the pitcher comes into today, as Tom mentioned, just four and one third innings pitched on the season. This one hit by Mazzara into right field. Under it, no one for the Marauders. It drops into the outfield for a leadoff single for Mazzara. Now six straight at bats, six straight on bases. Did he get on bat, on, on base the first game uh, towards the end? Well, let's, we'll go back in the record books. His last at-bat no, so in No, so it is six. Okay, yeah. So uh, unbelievable. He and, and, and that is four for four, two. Three hits he had in that last game, even six times. 
three hits. That's his fourth one right there. Mazzara stays hot. Now here's Charlie Gill playing first base today for the Crusaders. Some lineup changes from game two for St. Joe's. We'll read you the defense. In the infield from third to first, David Alessi gets the start at third. Joey Haynes, Nate Casarsa, and Anthony Greco round out the infield. Same outfield as the previous two games. Eagle, Chris Casarsa, and Jeremy Connor from left to right in the outfield. Thomas Zwarecki in his usual spot behind the dish, catching from Brandon Bucello. Brandon, four and one third innings pitch, just seven hits allowed entering today's game. Allowed six runs for an 8.08 ERA, but like Tom, you mentioned, just too good of a third baseman to take off his place in the infield to move onto the mound. The 1 1 to Charlie Gill with a runner on first. Misses for a ball. Gill, a 286 hitter on the regular season for the Crusaders. Takes a cut at that one. 2 2 the count. Another gorgeous day. Beautiful the day. difference is. Truly, there is no wind right now. Well, I shouldn't say that again. We, we keep saying no wind, but we can look out far and nothing. It's across the street from Canisius. Flags are much higher. Trees are much higher, and it's really blowing out there again. But when you look down the third baseline, the flag nearest us, barely any ripples, just a few gusts, like you mentioned, yep. Tom, that come in waves. Thrown back over to first again. Mazzara checked there. Still a 2-2 count to Charlie Gill. 69 and sunny in Buffalo, not a cloud in the sky. A perfect day for championship baseball. The 2-2 hacked back. Gill stays alive. Yesterday, five appearances for Charlie. Got on base two times after one strikeout, two flyouts. But the two times he got on base, Tom, they were extra base hits, a double and a triple, and both times he came around to score. Yeah, that bats were hot for Kanishi yesterday. Obviously, 12 runs. Strike three in there on Charlie Gill. Watches that one go by for the first strikeout of the game for Brendan Bucello. Uh, I know he didn't like that very much, but I'll tell you, it looked pretty good right there. I thought that was going to be strike three, and, he, and no doubt Eric Saladin calls it strike three. Saladin, your home plate umpire over at first, first base. It's Rick Antonio. He was behind the plate in game number one, and at third, it's Doug Zavodny. The veteran umpire crew here. Well, early, Eric Saladin being tested with his strike zone on a called strike three on Charlie Gill. This pitch gets away. Rather, the toss over to first gets away from the first baseman, Anthony Greco. Mazzara will move over to second. That'll and obviously an Mazzara, Mazzara right there, you can see, already knows that he's got the speed. Want to try to keep him close is what they're trying to do because they know he's capable of going down there and stealing a base. I believe that should be credited as an error for St. Joe's over at first base. Greco in and out of his mitt there. Actually, it bounced. It would be really on the pitcher, on the throw over by the pitcher. The 0-1 to Drew Podlis, the center fielder. Speedy, the righty is. Watches that pick go in for strike number two. I think uh, the Canisius bench thought that was a little high as it comes in, crosses the plate, drops down. I think they wanted a high call on that one. Podlis, one run scored in his last game, drops to his knees on that pitch and gets the ball called. Podlis, in his first at bat yesterday, got hit by a pitch, came around to score, and then in the fifth, reached on a fielder's choice. Mazzara, hefty leadoff a second. The one two, just outside, two two the count. I'll tell you, and here's a kid that's got unbelievable speed, and we really haven't had a chance to see him on the base pass because he's at three hole. He's had people in front of him. We really haven't seen that explosive speed. 
Strike three to Drew Podlis. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Brendan Bucello. Tommy Lynch comes up to the bat. Two hits in game one for Lynch. In game two, three hits, a walk, and an intentional walk. Like you mentioned, Tom, the hottest hitter in the Georgetown Cup final, Tommy Lynch, happens to be a pitcher in his own right. He threw a darn good game one against these Marauders. He went the full seven in the loss. Through five strikeouts, just four runs allowed. But went home with the loss in game number one. The Marauders able to win that one off of a third inning explosion of offense. Just three runs scored in the third for the Marauders was enough for them to hang on to a 4-1 lead at the moment. Canisius would claw their way back 4-3 the final in seven. But that right there, after he gave up those three runs at that inning, shut down after that. Mm -hmm. And that's the Tommy Lynch we all knew, right? It was like a switch went off right there. This one chopped to the shortstop. Joey Haynes over to first, a bouncer in time to Anthony Greco on the scoop. That will end the first inning. No runs on one hit, just one left on base for the Crusaders in the first. We'll move to the bottom. The Marauders look to break the shutout. It's Chris Casarsa, Joey Haynes, and Anthony Greco due up for the top of the lineup for the Marauders after this on WNY Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee. We're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer bank? Welcome to the bottom of the first inning. Chris Casarso will lead things off for the St. Joe's Marauders as we get a look at our starting pitcher on the mound for Canisius. Number 32, William Enright. And I'll tell you today, right, game three, this is almost like game seven of a World Series. And when I say that, and I know you're not going to compare this to a World Series. I get it, okay? But why I'm c comparing it is it means very – they're not going to let a pitcher go long out here and struggle out here at all. You'll see bullpens get up very quickly to be able to make the moves because you don't have time to be able to, to see if somebody's going to work through it. You can't afford sometimes those two runs. So we may see pitchers not get that opportunity to go longer like they would in a regular season game or even in any other game right out there. I expect to see, if, it, if we see a pitcher struggle, to see bullpens get up very quickly. William Enright, a 1.94 ERA this season. Two wins in eight appearances. 18 innings pitched, he's got 21 strikeouts. Will can bring the gas if he wants to. He came in relief in game number two between these two teams in the regular season. Justin Ball had the start, went three innings. Enright came in relief. For the final three, had a 2-3-3 ERA in that one, allowing one run against, one earned run at least. It was a 6-3 victory for the Marauders. That was played at St. Joe's after Canisius took the first of the two regular season matchups when the Crusaders 
for the home team. Interesting to note, both teams took the, the home teams, took the games in the regular season, and then same with the first two games of the Georgetown Cup. St. Joe's, the number one seed, the home team in game one, took the victory 4-3. Canisius, the home team in game number two in these throwback uniforms that they're wearing again today, 12-5, they took game two. Now St. Joe's back as the home team, up to bat in the bottom of the first. It's a 1-2 count to Chris Casarsa. Swung on and missed. First strikeout on the day for Enright. A lot of superstitions in baseball. <laughs> there really are, right? I know there aren't a lot of stuff, but over the top sometimes in baseball. Hey, I just won in these. <laughs> I'm surprised if there was any cleaning even done oh, of no the way. uniforms that night, right? <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm going right back with them too. I, I totally agree with coaches over at Canisius. You could only assume Tennessee same Tennessee no podless, I'm sure. That's exactly what they were thinking. Same socks, same cleats, same everything today. First pitch to Joey Haynes, chopped back to the backstop. And here's the hot hitter right now for St. Joe's. I mean, three extra base hits last game, two doubles and a triple, showing his speed out on the base pass, but he got hot in the game yesterday. The 0-1 upstairs. First at bat yesterday for Joey, a ground out to second, and then he didn't look back. A triple and two doubles to end the game, and he scored the game's final run in the seventh, the fifth run on the day for St. Joe's in a 12-5 loss. The 1-1 one -one in there for a strike. And if you notice, every one of those extra base hits were in the gap, right about where it says Canisius out there at the wall, right mm -hmm. there between the 4-12 uh, and, uh, and the U.S. Army sign. Now take a look. Look at where the left fielder's playing out there, Jack. They're shading him actually as if he's going to go in the gap mm -hmm. where all his hits were yesterday. Jack Stravino in left field for Canisius today moves over from his typical right field spot. Aaron Jones takes a seat today in favor of some lineup changes for Canisius. The infield, Mike Doctor at third, Mazzara at short. Lynch moves over to second base where Charlie Gill returns to first, Gavin D'Amico catching for Will Enright, and the outfield, Stravino in left, Drew Podlis in his usual spot at center, Jamison Chalupka in right. This one swung on and hit by Haynes into center field, high in the air, losing hit was the center fielder Podlis. Luckily, Jamison Chalupka snuck his way over to right center to retire the second out of the inning. That must have went right up into the sun as the sun is... Uh, is behind us today right now with the time of this game. So I think that was a look up right into the sun. Just after 12 o'clock, the sun at its apex here from downtown Buffalo. Two outs gone by in the bottom of the first inning. Canisius looking to wrap things up and get back to the plate. This one swung on by Anthony Greco up high into the air again to right field. Chalupka makes the play to retire the side. A strikeout and two flyouts to right field for the Marauders. Canisius with D'Amico, Doctor, and Ball due up in the second. Look to get the game's first run in a decisive game three. Winner takes home the Georgetown Cup. Inning number two after this on Western New York Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee. We're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. 
Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tent goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835 Wolf. We're back for inning number two. Gavin D'Amico, the catcher, up to bat for the Crusaders to lead off the second inning. Yesterday, D'Amico, the lone Crusader not to come around on the bases. In five at bats, he had one hit. Got walked once. D'Amico, though, defensively. Remember how good he was defensively yesterday? All those block balls to stop runners from St. Joe's to getting home. And that was before the explosion happened, right? Mm -hmm. I thought his defense was critical in a lot of things to keep that game is before that actually they pulled away. Quickly an 0-2 count from Bucello. That one swung on and hit to right field. Down the first baseline in foul territory. Connor tracks under it. However, it sails foul. And tomiko has got power, right? If he gets a hold of one, watch out. It will go a ways. And here we talked about the way this park is configured. You get it into a gap with some power and you can run a long ways. 412, the furthest distance to straightaway center. 327 to left. 363 deep to right center. But I'll tell you, the way that corners are, I mean, you can hit a corner, it bounces another way, you think you got it, and all of a sudden you're running completely the other way. It's the corner the right way. The one two fouled away by D'Amico. Hey, this may be the, 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 the smallest of the crowds, I think, that we've seen so far. We've seen incredible crowds the first two games. Not that this is a bad one, but they were, <laughs> they were literally back over to the building there. 2-2 two, two to Gavin D'Amico. He fights back from down 0-2 to even the count. Perhaps, Tom, some fans of these two teams just being released from their Sunday mass. True. Or they're Nico. just watching us on WNY Athletics right there, We're right, Jack? okay with that as well. <laughs> no problem. Thank you if you are tuning in. Even at Mass, if you got an earbud in, you're listening to Western New York Athletics. Yeah, I like you. that. Now, that's a good one right there. <laughs> How many movies have we seen that somebody <laughs> doing that on, right? The 2-2 two -two below the knees. From down 0-2, D'Amico fouls off a couple pitches and earns himself a full count. Acts at this one to the shortstop. Joey Haynes deep in the hole, throws to first, not in time. D'Amico beats it out for an infield single. A catcher's not supposed to have speed. D'Amico flying down that baseline, gets himself a base hit. He earns that one. Great spot in the hole. Joey Haynes almost makes a great play, but D'Amico's speed was huge right there to be able to get that leadoff batter on. Michael Doctor steps up, a 265 average on the season for Mike. Four RBIs, one double, one triple on the season for Doctor. Again, another standout defensively for Canisius is Mike Doctor over at third base. Got on base three times yesterday in game number two. Walked twice. Struck out and then reached first base on a drop third strike. Hacks at the second pitch he sees. We at now one point were considering him for one of the players of the game. Oh, remember, yeah. remember, he was right in that conversation if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, Lynch and Mazzara got on base five straight times. And still you're talking about he had a phenomenal day and deserves the credit. He was, he was absolutely pivotal in Kenesius' win. The 0-2 to Doctor outside. Uh, the two walks, his most recent walk in the sixth inning, came around to score. A sacrifice RBI fly in the fourth inning. 
Rounded out a solid day for the third baseman. The doctor stands in one and two. Swings at that one. He struck him out. Three strikeouts so far for Busillo. Well, I'll tell you this. So what we didn't know, right, was what was going to happen as far as pitching goes, mm -hmm. right? Busillo with only four innings. And then what was gonna Enright gonna do, right? We, we had no idea. But boy, these two pitchers look great right now to start it off. Through four and one third innings in the regular season, Busillo threw just six strikeouts. He's halfway there through one and one third innings here today. First pitch to ball, a strike. Tom, you talk about how important that first pitch strike is, especially in a game three. 1-1 the count, but Bucillo, not a typical pitcher, hasn't gotten the reps this season, but he's finding the zone early. Well, hopefully he's still through bullpens, mm -hmm. right? And, I, and even though a bullpen's not live, uh, not live batters, I get it. But it at least keeps you fresh as to the zone, right? The 1-1 slapped down the third baseline. Alessi to first in time. He got him. D'Amico moves over to second. Greco, great footwork at first base. Did you see the footwork, right? Switch feet, made sure he was able to keep the opposite foot on and make that catch. Good footwork over there by Greco to get the out. Now this is our first look at Jamison Chalupka at the plate. He wears number 37 in the throwback Kanisha script uniforms today. Chalupka, 12 games played in the season, a 227 batting average. Five hits, two RBIs, one double in there. Watches the first pitch in for a strike. There was the hitting struggles of Aaron Jones, the left fielder, along with the defensive issues in left field for Canisius that found himself on the bench here today in game three. They move over Stravino from right to left to cover that extra space in left field. Chalupka already tested twice earlier in the first inning defensively. He made two fly out plays in right field. After not playing the last two days, stepped in, made a couple big plays, and you got to think that settles him right in after making a couple plays early. It's all it takes, right? That one play to get the jitters out of the way right there, and it's like, I'm good to go right now. 2-1, Chalupka up in the count. You hear the Canisius dugout to our right. Yesterday, we had the pleasure of sitting right next to Paul Nasca and the St. Joe's Marauders. Just like game one, we're back with the Canisius squad down the first baseline. The 2-1 in there to even the count. All right, so here it is. What's the over-under about how far Paul Nasca comes out of the dugout <laughs> to sit over here now today, right? <laughs> we got we got one, two, three. He went four gates down the last time. Does he go to the fifth? <laughs> Will he reach the backstop and the warning track? Perhaps it will depend on how his pitcher performs today in Brendan Bucillo. 3-2 the count. And to Paul, Chalupka. We're, we're obviously teasing you, bud. We, of we absolutely love Paul Masca. I'm just teasing. We were having some fun. And listen, if I was out there, I'd be going nuts myself, too, <laughs> running all over the place trying to get myself. Oh, here he comes. Look at this. Already <laughs> one and a half gates down. This one slapped into left center field. Right into the mitt of Josh Eagle. That will conclude inning number one and a half. We move to the bottom of the second. The two up with the heart of the lineup, Zwarecki, Bucillo, and Jeremy Connor for St. Joe's after this on Western New York Athletics. Avoiding care can lead to worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non-emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYImmediateCare.com for more information. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to HowardHanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. 
We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. If you've been injured in an auto accident, large or small, call 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab right away. If you are in pain or just sore, don't take chances. Call RES today and take advantage of their 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. With no co-pays, RES will help navigate the confusing world of no-fault insurance with you so you can concentrate on getting better. 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. The most important call you can make after an auto accident. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project car. Welcome back to the Dembski Sports Complex in downtown Buffalo. Game three of the 2022 Georgetown Cup. The winner today, the champion of the Monsignor Martin Baseball postseason. First pitch swung on by Tom Zwarecki, deep to left center field. The center fielder under it, Drew Podlis, makes the play. Zwarecki heads to the dugout, one out gone by. Boy, your pitcher, especially one pitch, one out. Keep that pitch uh, count down. You know, I said both both pitchers right now are absolutely stepping up in this moment. Nine pitches thrown in the first for Will Enright. Three up, three down in that inning. One third of the way there in inning number two. And I'll tell you which is also um, rhythm wise, which is interesting. Enright doesn't go from the windup. Mm. So with runners in that, when, when the runners get on, nothing's going to change with him. He gets to keep that pace and everything that he's got going right now that's going well for him to keep going. That pitch from and right upstairs on Bucello got him to swing aggressively, 1-1 one, one the count. Toughest pitch to stay off of. You can see it too easy, right? It comes right by the eyes. You want to swing at it. That one near the word mark Marauders again. Hacked back foul. Talk about a jersey matchup and a half. The pinstripes for Canisius, an old school look for St. Joe's. A gray out look on top with maroon numbers, black trim. Perhaps not an announcer's favorite uniform style. We know Stu Boyer. I was just going to say, Stu. <laughs> Stu, you know we're thinking of you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good look for St. Joe's, just not from a distance. You can't see necessarily who's out in deep center field, potentially. It's funny. Stu, one of the numbers that he always had problems with was Canisius's, mm. too. It was that uh, that white on gold yeah. is what it was, and uh, you couldn't see it uh, during the day, right, right, or when the sun was out a little bit. And he's like, I can't see nothing. <laughs> you know, it was, it was so funny. And writes, fifth pitch. Fouled away, 2-2, two, two, we stand. The pitcher, Bucillo. But that was football. That's, to me, even harder because here at least we know who's in what position. You know where the ball is. You don't really have to see the number. Um, so, But that's football where you've got to see the, know the numbers back right. there and be able to see them. The other one was Batavia. All of that. They wore these. Um, it was so funny. These Another foul ball down the first baseline. That one out of play. They wore these camo jerseys, and it was like a camo number on the camo jersey, and it was so hard to see. And, in fact, one time, <laughs> this was the funny part, one time, kid scores a touchdown. We couldn't see it. We go to the booth next door where the, where the coach is in there and go, who scored that? We don't know who scored it. They're like, well, I don't know. We, we, we have no <laughs> idea. And we're like, are you kidding me? You guys don't even know your own guys? The 2-2 two -two just inside on Bucillo. Even make it a full count. 3-2. Well, when you wear a camo jersey, it's designed to be unreadable. <laughs> when so the numbers just are camo So Stu well. has a very warranted <laughs> doubt, but we always kid about it. We Absolutely. really do. The three-two fouled away. Bucillo, a pitcher in his own right, fouling off Enright four times this at bat. 
staying alive. Yesterday, Brendan reached first base every time he got up to bat. Two doubles, a single, and an error got him on base. Strike three called. I'll tell you, you can hear Canisius has got the student section today. Mm -hmm. They're over here, right over here near us. And you can hear they've got a very good student section over here today that uh, they came out in full force. Two proud institutions in Canisius and St. Joe's. And, and there's not too many rivalries, and, and especially mm -hmm. in baseball, that you can say, I'm playing my rival in a championship game. Right. That doesn't happen often, right? This it, this is where it happens often. It's why this rivalry always takes another stage. Down the first baseline out of play. Jeremy Connor up to bat, the right fielder for St. Joe's. Yesterday, a fly out, a ground out, a strikeout. In the sixth inning, he reached on a fielder's choice. A lineup loaded with righties for St. Joe's. Two on the count to Jeremy. Two outs gone by in the bottom of the second. This one to the third baseman, Mike Doctor, over to first base in time for the final out of the second. Again, three up, three down for the Marauders. Canisius looks to get the game's first run in the third inning. It's Jack Stravino, then to the top of the order with Mazzara and Gill, due up after this on WNY Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. With exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money-back guarantee, we're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835-WOLF. Jack Stravino to lead things off in the top of the third inning. Scoreless through two from the Dembski Sports Complex in downtown Buffalo. Winner take all game three of the Georgetown Cup. St. Joe's took the first four to three. Canisius the second 12 to five. Tom, we expected a high scoring game here today. Still just two innings in awaiting the game's first run. Stravino hacks one to the second baseman, Nate Casarsa, throw over to Greco in time for the first out of the third. Nice sliding play right there. Great job. I love that play, especially by a second baseman, because you use your body, in essence, to stop the play. If it does get by you, body's still there. You can still make the stop and have enough time to still make the play. Victor Mazzara steps up to bat. Can we get it on base seven out of seven times? Seriously? This kid's amazing. Reached on an, a single to right field his last time up in the first. He swung at the second pitch he saw then. This time he receives a first pitch ball. 
Albany, you're getting somebody big, I'll tell you that. Takes the hack at pitch number two, back to the backstop. The crowd's starting to fill up here at Dembski Sports Complex. I think you're right. I think you had to do the church thing, and then they're <laughs> on their way up to church. Maybe a little breakfast before it came, right? Get a little nice and full. This one hacked up to center field. Mazzara, seven for seven in his last seven at bats. He reaches on another single. Man, if I had my hat on, I'd stand up. I'd be tipping my cap right now. <laughs> Unbelievable, this kid. Seven times, five for five. Five for five in the last two games. I am tipping my cap there, Mr. Mazzara. Boy, unbelievable. When you're hot, you're hot. Uh, that's exactly, and you're just seeing the ball really well. Now Charlie Gill stands in, went down looking. A 2-2 pitch in there for strike three. Back in the first inning, Gill, his second opportunity at the plate, swings at the first pitch strike. David Alessi, the lone marauder not batting in the lineup, just defensively at third base. We saw him on the mound yesterday as the Crusaders forced the marauders to go through four pitchers. Max Stanger came out after one and one-third innings with an injury. Matt Halsdorfer did his best to clean up after that, pitched three and two-third innings. Allowed six hits and two runs against after Stanger allowed four. Patrick Beyer then came in for the sixth inning. This one hacked down to left field. Making the play is Josh Eagle. Two outs gone by. Eagle, nice job running that one down. I mean, he's not playing like where you would normally play left field. He's shaded toward left center. He does a great job of running that one down. I'll tell you, first one went off his bat, I thought, wow, this may fall down the line. That falls down the line. And especially down the line, ones that fade like that can easily skip and go towards uh, even farther towards foul territory. And it does that, and now you got yourselves in trouble, especially when you got speed like this on the base pass. Mazzara still sits at first base. The first pitch ball, Podlas stands in. The 1-0. Swung on, up into the air. The second baseman, Nate Casarza, back into the outfield. Collides with the right fielder, Jeremy Connor. Not before making the play to retire the side. One hit for Canisius. Mazzara left on base again. We remain scoreless. Moving to the bottom of the third inning. Josh Eagle, Sean Connor, and Nate Casarza do up for St. Joe's after this on WNY Athletics. Our homes have become offices, gyms, schools, and playgrounds. And at Western New York Immediate Care, we know you may need us now more than ever. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care physicians are trained to diagnose and treat most non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses. With five convenient locations open seven days a week, help is never far away. Life has changed, but Western New York Immediate Care is still here for you. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. Bottom of the third, the St. Joe's Marauders do up with the bottom three, three hitters of the lineup. Josh Eagle, the left fielder, to get things started. 
William Enright pitching a fantastic game so far. Two strikeouts, one apiece in the first and the second inning. Three flyouts and one ground out to third base. That's been all defense for Canisius so far. Two hits for the Crusaders offensively, none allowed yet. Yeah, three hits up on the board for Crusaders. Do they have three? Lassar's they do, yeah, they yeah. do. I beg your pardon. This one into right field. A single oh, leadoff oh. for Josh Eagle. It goes right past Jamison Chalupka, who misread it on the hop. Coming around second base, Josh Eagle. They send him halfway down the third base line. The throw to the plate. A stand-up triple for Josh Eagle. They'll confer on what the ruling officially, yeah, regardless, a runner on third base for St. Joe's. That's a single with an error right there is what it is, unfortunately. Um, but he. Uh, but listen, how many times do you make a great play out in the field? And we saw Eagle makes a great play out in left field, runs that ball down, right? Mm -hmm. Then gets an opportunity to come up at bat. What happens? Boom, gets on base, makes the spark happen. Now you've got a chance for that first run. Just 90 feet away is Josh Eagle after the newly subbed in Jamison Chalupka in right field was unable to make the routine play to first on what would have been a single. Second pitch swung at. And listen, Wallace Coach Nask is saying make contact. You hit anything to the right side, my guy's getting home. Deep fly ball, my guy's getting home. Just make contact. Sean Connor, the DH today, hacks that one back away. One, two, the count. And the camera holds up over there. We were just talking about, um, folks, off air, how so many people are seeing games now, and you got to see it through a fence. And we've really, I've got to give credit, um, you know, to the Western New York Athletics and, and just being able to get now all our stuff as much as we can through that fence. Beautiful picture today from behind the plate and Mario Hall down the first baseline. I mean, really, we got to thank Frank Wolf as the guy, you know, who helps us with all our equipment and gets everything we need. We can't do it without Frank. The 2-2 in the dirt. Coming down the third baseline is Eagle. He will score the game's first run on a passed ball past Gavin D'Amico. The St. Joe's Marauders take the lead 1-0. Folks, far from over though, right? <coughs> still early in this game. I still think Enright's pitching well. Like I said to you, that was a single with an error. What could have been a harmless single at first and perhaps on the pass ball, a move over to second, second base. Right. Instead, a costly play in right field costs a run. So, Tom, would that be an earned run then on Will Enright? No. Due to the error. Yeah. A walk delivered to Sean Connor. He'll take first base. Still no outs in the third. Nate Casarsa stepping up to the plate. The bunt attempt foul. Sean Connor was on the move to second. That's the one thing that will drive coaches nuts. Get the bunt down, right? You're not trying to get a single. You're not trying to do anything where you're really trying to place it perfectly. All as we want you to do is to get that ball down, to get that runner over to second base in scoring position. Nate Casarsa had a single yesterday and came around to score in the fifth inning. Runner nearly went to second. Held back at first is Sean Connor. Nate Casarsa watches strike two. Chris Casarsa in the on-deck circle will be up next for St. Joe's. Not so soon as Nate hacks back another foul ball. The 
The first one, first run so crucial in this series. Canisius got the first run of yesterday's game in the bottom of the first. They led 2-0 after one. In the two regular season games these two teams played, the team that scored first held on to the victory. Even going back to game one of this series, in the second inning, St. Joe's went up 1-0. They would hold on 4-1 final. 4-3, rather. 4-1 in the regular season. Strike three. Casarsa goes down swinging. Three strikeouts now for Will Enright. Big strikeout right there. Even from a confidence standpoint, right? You really wanted to make sure the momentum comes back to you as a pitcher. So what? You can't do anything about what just happened there. Let me get myself back. Let me get things under control and does exactly that. First pitch inside to Chris. Up and away, pitch number two. Last couple you could see just Enright didn't finish is why you've seen them come up high. Remember, you're coming downhill. That's a nice one. See the difference in the finish? You can see his finish point, the whole bend, the release, uh, get down low. That's the difference you can see, especially in the pitcher. You stand straight up, watch. You're going to open up, and you're going to see that those balls take off high. The 2-1. Swung on, up into the air, down the first baseline. Right near the cameraman making the play wow. is Charlie Gill. Photographer had to duck and dive away from that one. Gill able to make the play. Yeah, I, I think they're going to ask him to move over there, too, is what they're doing. I mean, he's, uh, you know, I, I think one thing, but he was almost laying down <laughs> on the ground. That's why he had to roll over yeah. and do some stuff to get out of the way. Joey Haynes flew out to right field in the first inning. Two gone by. First pitch just outside. Canisius looking to repeat as Georgetown Cup champions. They took it in two last year over these same St. Joe's Marauders. St. Joe's with the opportunity to win it all yesterday were not able to. The last championship the Marauders won back in 2017. It was the third from their manager Paul Nasca in his time since 2011. Hack to shortstop. Mazzara scoops it up, tosses to first. The hop, not in time. Wow. Charlie Gill can't believe it. He made the play on the scoop. The wheels from Joey Haynes earns himself an infield single. Listen, Haynes is fast, you guys. And Mazzara gets in the hole and throws, almost throws him out in a bang bang play. What does that say for Mazzara in that play right there? I mean, Mazzara, I've already tipped the cap once to you. You want me to do it again? I mean, I mean, you just, it doesn't matter offensively, defensively. You're doing it all right now. Who gets the pleasure of getting Victor Mazzara added to their collegiate team next Albany. year? Albany. Albany, you're getting something special right now. And you're getting all their pitchers, and you got Eisenman right now for Frontier <laughs> doing it for you out there. I'm telling you, Albany should be sitting right here in western New York with guys like this. If you're watching from the University of Albany, we welcome you on Western New York Athletics. Glad you could join us wherever you may be. 1-1 one, one the count, two outs gone by in the bottom of the third. The game's opening run scored by Josh Eagle earlier this inning. Reached on a single, an error in right moved him to third base, and then a passed ball brought him home. Tom, in games like this that means so much, it's usually those small errors that cost so much. Small, the little things, right? Getting your bunts down, right? All the things, right? You want to make sure that everything is executed like you need to to be able to win a championship. The 2-1 hit sharply to center field. It'll drop in for a single. 
Coming around second base, Sean Connor. He will score. Greco, big hit right there. We talked about him. He's another one off to William and Mary is where he's going to be off to. Does a great job. Nice line drive piece of hitting right there. And it looks like Coach Sanicito is going to come out and talk to his uh, team right now. Member two down. I don't think this is I'm going to pull a pitcher. I think this is let's talk about our first and third right here. Let's make sure we've got the right play in here. Let's make sure that everyone understands where to be, what to do, because you do not want to make a mistake. Sometimes going after that runner and then letting a third run in, you want to make sure everybody understands what their role is and what's going to happen if a runner does X or if a runner does Y. Anthony Greco was definitely due a 475 hitter in the regular season. In game number one, his only reach on base was a walk. In game two, he did not reach the bags. Game three steps up in a big way. And now here comes their top hitter up, right? Tom Zwarecki flew out to center field his last time up, leading off the second. Watches a first pitch ball. Will Enright from the stretch, runners on the corners. High That's into trouble. the air, into right field, the gap will drop. It'll score one. The throw home will keep Greco at third base as he was off on a hit and go. Runners on the corner again. A three, nothing lead for St. Joe's as Joey Haynes comes in to score. I think Zarecki right there said it all when he just shrugged his shoulders. Sometimes you hit the ball harder than you could ever ask. It's right at somebody, and sometimes the little bleeders fall in, right? This time he gets the bleeder. They entered this inning scoreless. The throw to second on the steal attempt reaches Another run in for the Marauders. Anthony Greco comes in on the double steal attempt that got Kanisha sleeping. Both Greco and Zarecki, great jumps right there on those first and third steals. I'm not sure that even, um, even with a great throw that uh, they would have actually gotten Zarecki on that one. One zero to Brendan Bucello. One one. That one tipped out of the mid of Gavin D'Amico. But listen, folks, go back one day for me, please, right? 12 runs Kanisha's put up on the board. Don't think that this game's over. They've got offense on the other side, and we've already been talking about Mazzara. He's right now seven times get on base. Anything can happen on the other side. This game's far from over, folks. This one hit to the gap in left field. It'll reach the left fielder, Jack Stravino. Throw to the plate, not in time. A five-run third inning for the Marauders. I think you're going to see the bullpen start to warm up here for Canisius. I think you're going to get a pinch runner right here is what you're going to get also. Yep, here comes a pinch runner out for St. Joe's right now at the same time. Pinch runner is, and you're right, boy, tough to see right now. I can't see the number. Well, there you go. We just got it. <laughs> Shout out to Dean Adams on the public address. Tom Renewez at first base will run for the pitcher, Bucello. Not taking any chance of an injury to their starting pitcher. Five run, third inning for St. Joe's. The third has been the inning of runs throughout the series going back to the regular season. St. Joe's scored the first run in game number one in 
the third inning. They would lose the game 4-1 to one after Canisius took the lead in the fourth. The next day, six runs scored total in the third inning, three apiece back on May 5th. Fast forward to the Georgetown Cup Championship. The third inning saw the game's first run from each team, and it was where St. Joe's took the 4-1 to one lead. Unaware to the pitcher, Enright stealing second. Enright throws to the second baseman. Tommy Lynch applies the tag. Whoa. We had a ruled out, and then they'll play on. Was it a balk? It was a balk, so that's what happened. You saw Eric Salad and the umpire come out. Hmm. He called the balk on there is what it was, which is the reason why he's safe, why you saw the umpire call him out first. 2-1 now to Jeremy Connor. Fouled away, 2-2. Two -two. This one hit to right center field. Diving to make the play from right field, Jamison Chalupka. It's exactly what the Crusaders needed. Chalupka, an error at the beginning of the inning, cost the Crusaders their first run against, makes up for it to end the inning with a runner on base for St. Joe's. Five runs scored by the Marauders in the third inning. Canisius. Looking to respond with the heart of the lineup, Tommy Lynch, Gavin D'Amico, and Michael Doctor. It's game three of the Georgetown Cup Championship from downtown Buffalo right here on Western New York Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. I love being home. With exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee, we're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you see this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835-WOLF. The top of the fourth inning, ready to get underway. For Canisius, outside of Victor Mazzara, you couldn't ask for a better hitter to step up to lead off the fourth after suffering five runs against in the bottom of the third. Tommy Lynch, while he grounded out to shortstop in the first inning, had a five for five day yesterday from the plate, reaching the base on all five at bats. Swings at this one into left field. It'll drop for a single. And he stays hot right there, right? Same thing, what do we got? Five for five is what Mazzara is technically, even though he got on base more, he's five for five over two games. And right there, Tommy Lynch is right now 
four for five in those two games. And I want to say he went two for two in the first game. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. Those two are just unbelievable. Their stats. But this is how to answer if you're Canisius, right? You come out, leadoff runner gets on, you want to make sure you've got some sort of an answer. Hey, even if it's not all five, right? Mm -hmm. Get one, get two, get something up on the board to have your answer. Gavin D'Amico at the plate, a power hitter in his own right. Sitting in the five hole is D'Amico, Mike Doctor due up after him before the designated hitter Justin Ball steps in. Ball in the dirt, blocked neatly by Zwarecki. Keeps Lynch at first base. And those have been important today. We talked about it yesterday with D'Amico, right? And unfortunately, the one D'Amico let go today, right? What happens? We see the we see the runner score. And Zarecki now doing the same thing for his team, stopping Lynch from getting in the scoring position. 2-1, right back to the pitcher. Turn to get the bat runner at second base, over to first. Hey, he's safe. I thought he was safe at yep. second. Yep, he came off the bag. Good call by Blue right there. But they do get the out at first base, so he'll move over. He'll uh, he'll move he'll move over, and you can't get guarantee a double play. So they do get the out. There won't be an error on this one. So it'll be just runner on second. But Lynch does get in the scoring position, and and I'll tell you, remember when we talked about how this game started? What did we say? There was a reason why Coach hasn't pitched. Brendan a lot, right? Is because he's a great third baseman. Right. What happened right there? Showed his third baseman skills the way he snags that one up right there and almost has a fantastic double play. Just a bit too high for the shortstop Joey Haynes to make the play. They were looking to turn two there. Would have been yeah. an unbelievable way to start the third inning, the fourth inning defensively after scoring five in the third. Crusaders have had one hit in every inning. They've left one runner on base in every inning. No runs scored. It was the problem in game one for Canisius, the same thing. Runners left on base. Eight of them in game one. They lost four to three. Yesterday, though they scored 12, they left 11 on base. First pitch to Mike Doctor outside. And the question is, can he just oh, yeah. what the doctor ordered right here, right? <laughs> well, you knew I had to get that one in at one point, right? <laughs> doctor watches the first strike in there to even the count. He was yesterday with three big hits, I'll tell you that. Mm. Now you need to get him hot again. And it would be great to get him hot with a runner in scoring position. Like I said, just get something on that board for Canisius. Three strikeouts for Brendan Bucello today. Delivers the 1-1 one, one low. 2-1 the count to Doctor. He struck out swinging in his first at bat, three straight strikes. Paulie Nasca now down two and a half fences. <laughs> We're getting closer. <laughs> the line set at four and a half fences. Doctor down oh. the third base line and fair. Deep into left field. Josh Eagle back to collect it. Canisius on the board. It's an RBI double for Mike Doctor as Tommy Lynch scores. Canisius' first run on the game. He delivered. Right, the doctor delivered right there. He comes up big, that is awesome. Got it right down into that corner right there. Two bases, now you put yourself in scoring position and give Kinesis an opportunity for another one right here. This was the, exactly the answer Kinesis needed after giving up five in the last inning. Justin Ball hits one to short. Throw over to third, the tag in time to get the lead runner, Doctor. Justin Ball reaches on a fielder's choice. Coach Santacito not happy over at third base. 
Give Joey Haynes a big heads up right there as he gets the lead runner out. Goes with the lead runner right there, gets him out, and absolutely could have stopped right there a rally by that play. Now, Jamison Chalupka, who's had a roller coaster of a day so far today, started the day hot, two flyouts on the defensive side in the first inning. The second he wasn't involved defensively, that's when he got up to bat, earned himself a full count and a flyout to left. As the head coach, Justin Sanicito, having words with the umpires in the field, Doug Zabani. And obviously it's hard to tell. I think there, that his, com his complaint is, is that he was blocking the base. Hmm. That's what I think the complaint is. Don't, again, no, I'm, I'm, not put, don't put words, I'm not trying to put words in Coach Sanicito's mouth. That's just what it looks like because he's pointing out in front of the base where the third baseman was standing. That's the only thing I could think about what he was talking about. We'll see if we could find out. So here's Jamison Chalupka. Swings at the first pitch he sees back behind the fence. In the bottom of the third, the Crusaders suffer five runs against. It started with an error in right field by Jamison Chalupka. That brought Josh Eagle from a single to third base. He would score on a pass ball. Jamison hacks this one into the Canisius dugout. It's the only thing that scares me about these dugouts is they're wide open, and those foul balls come quick. It was an 0-2 count that Chalupka had in the second. He earned himself a full count after fighting away some foul balls and watching three balls go past him. Here's the 0-2, two outs upstairs. Swung on and missed in the dirt. Strike three to Jamison. One run for Canisius. They get a response for the Crusaders. Justin Sanacito has a few more words for Rick Antonio in the field and Doug Zavodny. They will chat in the break. We'll be back with the bottom of the fourth. The Marauders looking to keep the bats hot. In the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be the same as the third. Eagle, Connor, and Nate Kasarsa do up after this on WNY Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee. We're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property. We welcome you back to Buffalo, New York, just east of downtown Buffalo. It's the Dembski Sports <laughs> Complex, home of the Canisius College Golden Griffins. Hold on, you got to tell them why now. <laughs> And Wright delivers the first pitch, swung on and hit by Eagle to the second baseman in time and a collision on the bag. Brings a rise out of the fans behind home plate. Eagle starts us off in the fourth with a ground out. During the break, Francis Beck, our producer, claiming that downtown Buffalo does not reach the home of the Canisius College Golden Griffins. We'll give him that it is east of downtown, of course. Not right down the strip near the ar arena. 
<laughs> Perhaps if we were at Salem Field where the Bisons play, we could yeah. be sure. Then we could say downtown Buffalo. perfectly there. All right. Regardless, a beautiful day in western New York. 69 and sunny. Some clouds rolling in, but scattered at that. Looking to be a perfect day for championship baseball. 1-1 the count now to Sean Connor. He reached on base last inning with a walk after earning himself a full count. Came around to score the game's second run. This one he hits high into left field. Coming in under it is Jack Stravino. He misses it. Stravino fires it into second. Tommy Lynch not able to apply the tag in time. Sean Connor reaches second base on the play. You know, I'll tell you, Enright has done what he's needed to do today, mm -hmm. right? He's come in, if you think about it, you take away that, that single that turned into a triple, you take away this play right here. I mean, Enright has really pitched a very good game right now. It was a run of four straight hits in the third inning. Combined with five RBIs and five runs scored. That gave the Marauders their lead that they currently sit at. Kanisha's able to respond, however, at least putting one up on the board in the top of the fourth. <laughs> Two errors on Kanisha's on the day. Most recently, Sean Connor reaching second base on an error in left field to Stravino. Not his usual spot in the outfield. Typically, a right fielder moved over to the left side today. An error to each of the outfielders in the corners. Hit him. Our first hit batter on the day, Nate Casarsa, will sit on first base. That's one I can't tell. Did the sun get in his eyes? I, do, I did see the wind blowing far out there with the, uh, with the flag. Did the wind have a play in it? You know, tough to tell. Well, the double play now intact. And we may have a pinch runner here out at second base. The pinch runner at second base for St. Joe's, number 14, Aaron Jentz. Aaron Jentz out to second base. The junior. Stands at six foot one. He's 175 pounds, speedy on second base as the Marauders look to perhaps play a little small ball here and get him over and in. The top of the lineup here with Chris Casarsa. Flew out to first in the third. Struck out swinging in the first. Casarsa looking for his first on base at bat. The 1-0, inside, 2-0. Five hits on five runs, just one left on base in the third for St. Joe's. They've got two ducks on the pond at first and second currently, and a 2-1 count to Chris Casarsa. One out, gone by. And right, delivers. Swung on and missed. 2-2. Two, two. Crusaders could use a bit of a momentum swing here. An error and a hit batter are the reasons there are two batters on base. Called strike three as Chris Casarsa goes down looking. The fourth strikeout thrown by Will Enright. Enright's had one strikeout every inning so far. He can end the fourth with one here. A four sound at every base as well. The 
First pitch to Joey Haynes in the dirt. Reached on a single to left field his last time up after flying out to right in the first. Actually, that was that play that Mazzara had over in the hole that almost threw him out, if you remember. Duo to Joey Haynes. Joey, right now your hottest hitter for St. Joe's. Three hits yesterday, one today. He's four hits right now. The shortstop right-handed hitter stands in for the 2-0 and watches that one right down the heart of the plate. 2-1. Bit of a change up there on 2-1. Two outs gone by, runners at first and second. The 2-1 hit high into the air to right field. Jamison Chalupka traps it and makes the play. No runs scored in the fourth inning for St. Joe's. Two runners left stranded. Canisius looking to cut into the four-run deficit in the fifth inning. It's Jack Stravino flipping it to the top of the lineup for Mazzara and Gill. Due up for the Crusaders after this right here on WNY Athletics. Our homes have become offices, gyms, schools, and playgrounds. And at Western New York Immediate Care, we know you may need us now more than ever. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care physicians are trained to diagnose and treat most non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses. With five convenient locations open seven days a week, help is never far away. Life has changed, but Western New York Immediate Care is still here for you. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. Back to the Dembski Sports Complex, game three of the Georgetown Cup. A five to one lead for the St. Joe's Marauders as we enter the fifth inning of play in a seven inning game. And Canisius. could be the inning that puts him where he's gonna have thrown more than he has all year, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? This is true. If he goes to the fifth inning right now, he will have pitched more than he did all year. Ducillo, four and one third innings pitched through the regular season. If he gets two batters down in this inning, he'll eclipse that mark. First pitch in there for a strike to the lefty, Jack Stravino. Second pitch to the second baseman, Nate Casarsa, in time to Greco for out number one. A bit of deja vu for Jack Stravino. Same thing that happened in the third. Let off that inning with a ground out to second. He does the same in the fifth. Victor Mazzara, his last time up, his last two times up, both singles to right. Looking to continue the hitting streak is the shortstop. Canisius dug out up and at him. Watches the first pitch in there for a strike. He didn't like that one. <laughs> he turned over to, uh, to Eric Sal and gave him the look. He didn't like that call. Ucello receives the sign. Delivers that one just a hair low. Top of the lineup here, just one out gone by. Top of the fifth. This one hit to left field. It has distance, however, just foul. <laughs> this Canisius crowd waiting for something to erupt about. 
They had one run scored in the top of the fourth as a response to the five-run third inning by St. Joe's. Brandon Bucello, the typical third baseman on the bump for the Marauders. The one-two, low. Zorecki shakes his head. He liked the location of that one. 2-2 two -two to Victor Mazzara. Strike three called Mazzara with a glare back to Eric Saladin. Another strikeout, the fifth on the day for Brendan. Two outs gone by in the fifth. Charlie Gill has yet to reach first base today. A strikeout looking in the first and a flyout to left in the third. You hear it from the Canisius dugout, they need a rally and soon. Second pitch way outside, 1-1. One, one. Gill hits it to shortstop. It goes past Joey Haynes. The pitcher, Brendan Bucello, telling his team to calm down and just eat it on the error. Gill reaches first. The second error on the day to the Marauders. Two errors apiece. The errors to Canisius costly. Will they be so here to St. Joe's? Two outs gone by. This one hit into right center field by Podlis. It'll drop in there. Chris Casarsa tosses it into the cutoff man as the runners are at second and third safely. A two-out double for Drew Podlis. And guess who's coming? The second baseman fresh off a single in the fourth. Tommy Lynch has the Crusaders lone run on the day as the Marauders will have a chat amongst their infield with an assistant coach. Tommy Lynch takes his strides over to the batty, batter's box. I think this is exactly what you thought, right? Calm them down a little bit, right? Let's just talk, no big deal. Runner, we're looking to get the batter out at first base and that's gonna be our focus right here, right now. You saw the pitcher Bucello calming down his outfielders and his infielders after the error to the shortstop in Joey Haynes, and then the first pitch thrown to Drew Podlis. He ambushes the pitcher and takes him to deep right center field. Runners on second and third. Canisius with an opportunity to dig into the four-run deficit here with Tommy Lynch. You're rarely given opportunities like this in games like this. Tommy Lynch, one of the hottest batters in the Georgetown Cup up to the plate. Can he come through here for the Crusaders with two runners in scoring position? First pitch in there. You also have to wonder, Tom, the St. Joe's assistant coach coming out has to throw Tommy Lynch off his rhythm a little bit. Um, that little extra time before yeah, the at-bat. Sometimes, I mean, you're still getting ready up there. You know, you're, you, you, it, it'd be one if I got up into the box here. I'm not up into the box yet, though. I don't know if that really would throw him off that much. Thinking more volleyball as a server is on a streak. Call a timeout, throw him off a bit. The 1-1 one, one low. I think it may have been, listen, we're not going to give him <laughs> anything good to hit is right. what we're going to do. And uh, as you see, everything outside, not really anything near the plate to give him. I got first base open, so. The Golden Lynch stands. Swings at the 1-2-1. One, the one. Into the center field gap. One run will score. Podless coming from second in there as well. It's a two RBI single for Tommy Lynch. The game now within two runs. Cortland 
Here he comes. Tommy Lynch does it again right there. No doubt about it. The hottest hitter right here stays hot. Cortland, you're getting a great one. And we got a pitching change coming right here. St. Joe's will take Brendan Bucello off the mound. He went further than he had all season. Four and one third innings in the regular season combined. Four and two third innings here today. However, a two run top of the fifth so far for the Crusaders. They will have Gavin D'Amico stepping up to the plate. And we should see Joe Stumpo is this who's coming in right now. We saw him game one close it out. We're going to see him right now game three. Stumpo will take the mound. D'Amico will take the box after this on Western New York Athletics. realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard hannah home happens here sometimes it just isn't your day we all need a little help from time to time that's why we're committed to providing safe quick and cost-effective care and we keep it simple just walk in we're here for you learn more today Joe Stumpo takes the mound for St. Joe's. Got the save in game one of the Georgetown Cup. He came in for the sixth and seventh innings, allowed just one hit, one walk, and one strikeout. Stumpo got the save. We'll see him again here today. In a 5-3 ball game, the Crusaders looking to rally. Listen, what did we say back when it was 5 nothing, Folks, game's not over yet. It's far from over. Guess what? We got ourselves a ball game right now, 5-3. And if you look at it, Kanisha's right now is actually out hitting St. Joe's at the same time. You can, I know you can probably barely hear it. You can hear a section, but we got to Kanisha's. Kanisha's fans, they're really on stump all right now. Every pitch that he throws, um, he had a couple balls that he threw early on. They were yelling, ball, ball. They were playing umpire back there during his warm-up pitches. Every part of the atmosphere, something that plays into effect. Potentially a competitive advantage for the Crusaders is that fan base. As it is in many other sports, you see in basketball the same thing. These two schools known for their student sections. First pitch in there to D'Amico, a strike. Here's another player that's looking to make an impact. Devin D'Amico last game, the only Crusader not to score. The 0-1 misses. The fake jeers of the Canisius dugout you can hear after a ball thrown. Stumpo delivers. Just inside, the Marauders dugout can't believe it. They shrug their hands in disbelief. 2-1 to Gavin D'Amico. Tommy Lynch stands on first base after a two RBI single. D'Amico wanted that one, just fouls it away, 2-2. We thank you for joining us here on your Sunday afternoon from downtown Buffalo on Western New York Athletics, the home of the Canisius College Golden Griffins is the site for the Georgetown Cup. The 2022 champion will be crowned here today. A five-run bottom of the third for St. Joe's, had them up 5-0. A run in the fourth, two so far in the fifth for Canisius. However, that is all they will get as D'Amico goes down swinging, leaving Lynch on first base. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth. The Marauders looking to respond after suffering three straight runs against going back to the fourth. 
Due up for St. Joe's, it's the heart of the lineup. Anthony Greco, Tom Zwarecki, and Brendan Bucello coming up after this. Our homes have become offices, gyms, schools, and playgrounds. And at Western New York Immediate Care, we know you may need us now more than ever. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care physicians are trained to diagnose and treat most non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses. With five convenient locations open seven days a week, help is never far away. Life has changed, but Western New York Immediate Care is still here for you. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love the in-home. for the bottom of the fifth inning. New pitcher for Canisius is Jeremy Sagan coming in relief for Will Wright. So we had a big day in Western New York with sports yesterday. For those of you who don't know, three Section 6 teams punched their ticket to the state championships. As you'll see Hamburg now advance, you'll see CSP advance, and Portville advances while Medina and Orchard Park both lost uh, their bid to move on to the States. And then on the girls' softball side, two teams punched their tickets to the state championship as Depew and Lancaster will advance on to a state championship. The 2-1 to Anthony Greco had a single in the third. Low. We were all over Western New York. We were at the Hamburg game. We were at the CSP game down in Salamanca. We were at all the three girls games yesterday over at Grand Island. And then we had Francis and a crew overdoing all the lacrosse games. Strike two called. Already tossing the bat was Anthony Greco. Thought he earned himself a walk. He'll collect the bat and head back to the box. The jeers thrown by the Canisius fan base behind home plate. Yeah, well, they're like right over near us. They're not, they are behind home plate, but it's, it's funny. It's like off to the side right near us. Now he'll toss the bat again. This time he'll take the trip down to first on a leadoff walk for Anthony Greco. Still a trip down to first, he's saying. It doesn't matter. Whether it's a pitch or a pitch later, I'll still take it, right? Tom Zwarecki, a single to right. In the third inning, was an RBI for two RBIs on that hit. That was that little bloop that went in, if you remember, as uh, Greco took off and the, a whole gap opened up for him. Swung on the first pitch, a strike. Oh, out in front of that one. Just got to sit back and wait. Jeremy Sagan. In control, throws over to first. Brandon Bucello on deck. Had an RBI single of his own in the third. This one hit to left field over the shortstop Mazzara. Stravino collects in the outfield and throws into Mazzara, the cutoff man, 
A single for the Marauders puts two runners on. That's his second big hit of the day right there. It looks like they're going to pinch run for him right now. It'll be David Alessi coming in to run at first base. The third baseman. DeLeo out at first base. Well, shout out to St. Joe's for the jerseys and the numbers they've got on them. Maroon, I'll pull out my Stu Boyer card here. <laughs> the maroon on gray. Perhaps good luck for St. Joe's. They're up 5-3 here today in the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first and second. It's Greco at second. And it's DeLeo at first. The 1-0 at the knees for a strike. I'll tell you, big in, we talked about, right, Kenny's just having to come out and answer. They get those runs, right? They make it close. Now what's the answer for St. Joe's right here? It'll load the bases. No outs gone by in the bottom of the fifth. Bucillo gets hit. I think you're going to have to see right now Kenesius bring their infield in. You're going to have to cut the run off at home in a tight game like this this late. Jeremy Connor has yet to get a hit in the last two games. He started the Georgetown Cup with two singles in his first two at-bats in game one. Since then, he has been held off first base as Justin Santonacito will take a stroll out to the pitcher's mound. The infield comes in for the conversation. This is all about what are we going to do, and I, I, like I said, is I think you're going to have to play infield in at this point. Oh, they're going to change pitchers. Yep. Oh, they're going to change pitchers. My bad. So, boy, he's going to come in right now. So now you're talking about Zip. Boy, tough spot. You're going to bring him into bases loaded, and they're going to ask Zip to take the ball right here. That's Steven Zip, the junior. Comes in relief for Jeremy Sagan after starting out this fifth inning. We'll take a break and come back for Steven Zip's first pitch to the Marauders after this. I love being home. We realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house. We're confident we'll find your dream home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Steven Zip ready to deliver his first pitch to St. Joe's. Jeremy Connor. So you see infield then. Play is at home. But look at D'Amico. If it's a quick, D'Amico could go back over to first base and try to turn the double play that way. First pitch just inside. Looked like a good one from Zip. Captain just told his coaches it was up high is what he said on that last one. Second pitch fouled away. Tough position to come into if you're Steven Zip. Bases loaded, a two-run lead. No outs gone by in the fifth. A 4-2-0 ERA and one appearance for Steve. This one hit into right field. Chalupka underneath it makes the play. Tagging from third is Anthony Greco. He is safe at home. 6-3 nice lead. 
Nice throw on the run and turn your body right there to even make that a play at home. Great play out in there right field. Remember, Eagle started this whole thing off, right, with that single and error that went over to third base right there. Grounded out to second base his last appearance. Watches the first pitch ball. Seven hits apiece so far in this one. The Marauders up six to three on the score that counts. Second pitch in there for a strike. Zip got his call right there, right? Shook off that first one. Got the pitch he wanted on the second one. Throw over to first. Perhaps a bit risky with the runner on third. However, return back to the pitcher in Steven Zip. This one chopped at to the shortstop. Mazzara to second base in time for one to first. Diving to keep it in front of him was Charlie Gill. However, the run will score from third in Tom Zwarecki. Good play by Gill right there to at least keep it from uh, getting a runner back in the scoring position again, right? But you got to give Zip credit. I know two runs have come in right here, but he really has settled things down. Fly ball, ground out, almost gets a double play. Zip is coming and done what he's needed to do. Eagle on first base, tested there. After reaching on a fielder's choice and an RBI. Now Sean Connor. Runner goes from first, up into the air on the first baseline. Charlie Gill makes the play in foul territory to retire the side. Two runs, one hit, one left on for the Marauders in the fifth. We turn our attention to the sixth inning. Canisius needing a response, down four in game three of the Georgetown Cup from downtown Buffalo after this. <laughs> Avoiding care can lead to worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non-emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYimmediatecare.com for more information. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today, and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. If you've been injured in an auto accident, large or small, call 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab right away. If you are in pain or just sore, don't take chances. Call RES today and take advantage of their 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. With no co-pays, RES will help navigate the confusing world of no fault insurance with you. So you can concentrate on getting better. 681-4088, RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. The most important call you can make. Michael Doctor to lead things off for Canisius. Sitting in the six hole, it's the bottom half of the lineup here. Dr. Ball and Chalupka do up. Doctor's been hot though, he really has. You know, we didn't even get a chance to talk about Canisius. They were actually playing uh, last night in their, um, in their World Series game. They were up 4-1. Mm -hmm. Ended up losing 11-6, but boy, they were right in their game for a while. The Golden Griffins, after winning the MAC championship, finally got a chance to play after some tropical storm weather down in Florida. 
and they're loaded with Western New York athletes in that one. I mean, there was there was multiple guys that played right here at uh, high school baseball. Doctor hits one high in the infield. All Marauders waving it off, coming in to make the play. Anthony Greco from first. The pitcher Stumpo thought he had it and then started to wave everybody off and said, I can't see it. Yeah, I, I think he couldn't see it. He got out of the way very quickly. Give Greco credit as he took charge right there, came running in. One out gone by in the sixth. Justin Ball reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth. Hits this one into the gap in left field. First hit on the day for Justin Ball. He stands at first base. Jamison Chalupka looking to do the same. A strikeout and a flyout to left for Jamison. It's the first pitch he sees down the first baseline foul. A runner left on base in every inning so far today for Canisius. A total of five. Stumpo delivers. Chopped down the first baseline. Foul but caught by Anthony Greco. Two outs gone by. Greco, two pop outs this inning. Greco in the conversation for player of the game as well for St. Joe's. Two runs to his credit, an RBI single at the plate. Jack Stravino, the left fielder, stands in and receives ball one. Stump really looks good today. The 1-1 one -one to Stravino. He fouled that one right into Tom Zwarecki. Got off his mask there. He tells Coach he's all right. Eric Zolanin takes his time. He'll exchange balls with the pitcher Stumpo. Giving Zwarecki a chance to shake it off. One, two to Jack Stravino. Two outs gone by. A runner on first. In the dirt, Stravino held his swing. Oh, I think they got to appeal that one. They got to peel it. They go to the oh. center fielder. All right. Doug Zavodny says that Stravino held up. One, two is the count. Make it two, two. Two outs gone by. Stumpo deals. Hacked at by Stravino. Foul down the third base line out of play into the stanchion. Right into the Marauders faithful. No fear of Justin Ball stealing second. Stumpo hasn't looked over to him once. Lefty pitcher eyes down the runner on first the whole way. Stumpo gets the strikeout to end the top of the sixth. The second strikeout thrown by Joe Stumpo today ends another inning. We'll be back. With the bottom of the sixth, it's Nate Casarsa, Chris Casarsa, and Joey Haynes up for the Marauders right here on Western New York Athletics.
Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee. We're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tent goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just we bring you into the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch swung on and hit to center field. Jumping up from the shortstop spot is Vic Mazzara. To the top of the order we go. Before game one, manager Paul Nasca told us he didn't have anything else to say to his players entering the Georgetown Cup. Just go out there and play ball at this point. They did that well in game one and walked away with a 4-3 victory. Perhaps a bit too tense in game number two, a 12-5 Canisius thwarting of the Marauders. Now this second pitch of the at-bat. From Casarsa, Lynch to Gill for the second out. Paul Nasca put a great quote I saw on Twitter. We were told we had to win two games. Didn't say which games we had to win. <laughs> we just had to win two games. Let's go back at it today. So uh, I think he said it best right there. The Marauders have responded. Seven runs so far today. Five in the bottom of the third. Steve Zip delivers upstairs. Second pitch ball again. Joey Haynes, a single back in the third. Was an RBI. He came around to score himself. Rio, does he got the green light? If he does, he's looking right across that belt. That's what he wants. It was low, a four pitch walk to Joey Haynes who gets on first base. A single in the third. A walk in the fifth, both times came around to score, did Anthony Greco. Couple good plays at first base last inning too. Hacks at the first pitch he sees, back to the fence. The first first pitch strike of the inning thrown by Steve Zip. First strike overall thrown in the inning. Two outs gone by. Bottom of the sixth, Canisius. They decide not to throw down to second. They allow Haynes to take it cleanly. It was a miscommunication over there is what it was because D'Amico was ready to throw that. Nobody was there at second. So uh, Haynes that steals that bag pretty easily right now and now gets into scoring position. The 1-1, one, one. below the knees. Right 
foul down the first baseline. Now, Tom, I know the Monsignor Martins, one of the few in New York State that have the private schools separate from the public. Is there a state tournament after this for the winner of today's game? Yeah, they'll play uh, down uh, uh, pretty much out of New York City as they'll play the winner out of there. St. Joe's winning back in 2017. They won in 12 and 13 as well. In fact, if you remember football, very similar to football is what it is right there. The throw to second base. Greco was sliding back. Doug Zavodny says he didn't get him in time. Yeah, great play, but I thought he was on the base. Like, it was a tag, but the tag was on the why he was on the base. Good play, though. Two outs gone by. The 2-2 two -two from Steven Zip. Upstairs, the throw to third misses everybody, goes into left field. And it'll be dropped by Jack Stravino as well in left. The eighth run for the Marauders. That was all Joey Haynes right there, right? Steal, steal, steal right there. Give him credit using that speed right there to be able to get an insurance run. Got on base with a walk and did it himself. And a full count walk for Anthony Greco. I think we're going to see a pinch runner right here for Greco as you see Coach Nazca calling timeout. Number four is who uh, I think is coming in. Yep, four. Rob Anspach comes in. On Spock, I beg your pardon. Dean Adams on the PA, giving the proper pronunciation here. Two outs still in the bottom of the sixth. When we go to the seventh, the Marauders will have a chance with Joe Stumpo to go three outs and earn the 2022 Georgetown Cup. Stumpo was near perfect in his first appearance this series back in game one where he got the save. Already has two inning ending strikeouts does Joe Stumpo today. Steve Zip looking to end this sixth inning with a runner on first throw high. Tom Zwarecki looking to get on base for the third time in a row after flying out in the second inning, back-to-back -back singles, scoring on both. Runner goes, no throw. Great jump, right? I mean, that's the reason why a catcher can't throw down is the runner just gets a fantastic jump right there. A solemn Canisius dugout. All sitting as we look to our right across the way. The Marauders all on their feet, cheering, clapping, feeling good, and why wouldn't you in a, an 8-3 to three game? And you know you've got one of your best closers available in Joe Stumpo on the mound. Four straight balls thrown by Steven Zip. Well, not the worst guy in the world to walk. And Tom Zwarecki. Ducello reached first base on a hit batter back in the fifth. Had a single in the third to left field. First pitch strike.
Tom, as the spring sports wind down, is there any plans for Western New York athletic broadcasts over the summer? I get a little bit of a break, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> I'm teasing. You deserve yes, it. It really is. Um, well, crack to right field. Jamison Chalupka at the warning track makes the play to retire the side. More on what's yeah, coming when up we in come the back. summer. Yep, good call. In the next inning. Two left on for St. Joe's. They don't care. They're heading to the seventh with a chance to take the Georgetown Cup with three outs in the seventh. We'll be back with that right after this. Our homes have become offices, gyms, schools, and playgrounds. <laughs> And at Western New York Immediate Care, we know you may need us now more than ever. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care physicians are trained to diagnose and treat most non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses. With five convenient locations open seven days a week, help is never far away. Life has changed, but Western New York Immediate Care is still here for you. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. Welcome to the seventh inning here on Western New York Athletics. The St. Joe's Marauders just three outs away from the 2022 Georgetown Cup Championship. However, as we all know, it's not over until the fat lady sings merely a hum in the distance at this point. Canisius at the top of the lineup has an opportunity to start a rally here with one of the hottest batters the entire series, Victor Mazzara, leading things off. Gill and Podlis on deck and in the hole for the Crusaders. So to finish answering your question, yes, we will be doing some baseball, triple ABA, some Legion, as well as some Muni games over the summer. Um, it won't be as consistent like we do during, you know, high school season where we try to be out there just about every night. But yes, we will 100% be out there to do some games. Um, we've already been asked to do a couple of the all-star games and different things like that, but we will absolutely be out there. And you'll see, which is great, some of the top high school baseball players play in, this league, in these leagues. And not only that, you'll also see some of them comboed with other schools and stuff like that. So you really will see some of the very best play over the summer. Stepping up to the plate is Victor Mazzara to Frank Sinatra's good life. He's had Quite a good season so far, Mazzara has, and a good series here in the finals as well. Struck out looking in the fifth. In the seventh, the Crusaders just looking for base runners. Dumpo delivers, hits him. Victor Mazzara tosses the bat to the dugout and strolls down to first base. And he gets on again, right? <laughs> Think about that, folks. He's gotten up nine times in the last two games, nine times, and has been on base eight out of nine times. What more can you ask for out of a leadoff hitter? Nothing. Well, Nine out of nine, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? The one he didn't disagree with, a 2-2 called strike in his last at-bat. This time hit by pitch, he's on first. First pitch swung on by Charlie Gill into right field. Coming under it is Jeremy Connor to make the play. Drew Podlis with a double in the fifth came around to score the Crusaders' second run off a of Tommy Lynch RBI. Eight hits for the Crusaders, just three runs to show for it. Podlis swings at the first pitch he sees high down the first baseline. 
The second baseman, Nate Casarsa, makes the play. Two outs gone by. The St. Joe's Marauders, one away from a championship for avenging the 2021 championship that the Crusaders took from the Marauders faithful in two straight. St. Joe's, they take game number one here this weekend. They lose game two and enter game three cool as the other side of the pillow. A five run third inning coupled with incredible defense throughout. The Marauders one out away. Stumpo delivers at the letters too high. And I'll tell you, win or lose, you could be talking still about Tommy Lynch being the MVP of this Georgetown Cup. He's been that good. Him and Bazaar both. Lynch hits one to the shortstop in the gap. Gets on base yet again. It'll move Mazzara to second. D'Amico, a first, a single rather, in the second to left field. Is that three hits for him today too? Three hits back to back to back after grounding out three in the first today. inning for Tommy Lynch. Three hits yesterday and then two hits day one. Your big time players stepped up in the finals. I, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm telling you. You could say that was still the MVP of the entire Georgetown Cup. I don't care what the scores are. That's how good this kid's been. Tommy Lynch at first. Victor Mazzara at second. Gavin D'Amico at the plate. Two outs gone by. Stump deals. D'Amico hits it into the air. Foul. The Marauders bench on their feet. Yeah, they want to run out on that field bad. You can, <laughs> you can taste it. The 0-1 from Joe Stumpo to Gavin D'Amico. Watches strike two. No, oh, there goes the Rowdies over there. See them over at St. Joe's, they're banging on the fence. The crowd on their feet. Two outs in the top of the seventh. Joe Stumpo on the mound. One pitch away from the Georgetown Cup championship. The 0-2. Swung on, fouled back to the backstop. Tell you though, D'Amico hit a gap, hit something down the line. Anything can happen all of a sudden, right? You start bringing up right now a tying run. Anything could still happen here. It's one swing could change the difference. The 0-2 from Stumpo. Fouled away again in and out of the mitt of Tom Zwarecki. Mikey Doctor stands in the on-deck circle. Who, who's hot himself right now, right? Think about that. You, you, if you could put something in a gap right now, all of a sudden the whole dynamics of the game could really change momentum. Or Stumpo's going to do what he's been doing, right? And try to get this out right here. The 0-2 again. Swung at, hit into center field. Chris Casarsa makes the play. The St. Joe's Marauders, your 2022 Georgetown Cup champions. The celebration has only just begun for the St. Joe's Marauders, an eight to three victory here in game three. A winner takes all situation. Their starting pitcher, Brendan Bucello, who had only thrown four and one third innings throughout the entire season, 
comes in and throws four and two thirds here today, including five strikeouts. And he gets the run support he needed to hang on to the win. Joe Stumpo comes in relief. He gets the save. Never a doubt for the Marauders, though Canisius tried their best to claw their way back. St. Joe's reclaims the title after losing last year to these Canisius Crusaders, the Marauders, your 2022 champions. As they walk through the handshake line and pay their respects, we take the time to thank you for joining us all season and all series long here for the Georgetown Cup and throughout the baseball campaign. From the top down, from Frank Wolf, everyone at Western New York Athletics, want to give my thank yous to Tom Prince, Francis Beck on the ones and twos today, Mario Hall out in the field on the camera. We saw plenty of incredible shooting and audio work this weekend here at the Dembski Sports Complex. All thanks to Tom Prince and his crew here, setting that all up. Heidi Gunther yesterday, Russ Batagli on the cameras this past weekend. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast here from downtown Buffalo. Paul Nasca takes his shower right on home plate. We got it, too. <laughs> Four-time champion Paul Nasca of the Georgetown Cup celebrates with his team. As we say our final goodbyes from the Dembski Sports Complex on behalf of everyone here at Western New York Athletics, I'm Jack Cruiser. We'll see you next season, and I bid you adieu.